Hello everyone, Robert Dempster here. So now we're going to continue with our Vox Hide lesson and we're going to turn this into a uh, character lesson. So we're going to use those Vox Hide tools to create something similar to this. Uh, by the end, you should have multiple uh, characters that look kind of similar. And you can even continue by adding a slight background here and adding some uh, painted elements. So by the end of this course, you'll be able to create a character very similar. And there's two different techniques that we're going to use. So the first one is uh, a very quick and easy way by using the carve tool. We can very quickly build up these forms on top of a existing character base and then we can paint into it. So this will be multiple videos. The first video is going to show you how to create this result and the next one will be uh, texturing this character. And then in fact if I just undo this we can see the textured result. I'll just select render. Okay so we're going to do something similar there and then I'll also show you a way uh, where we can create armor very quickly using another tool um, but it's a lot more precise and what we can do is we can put them both together so in this case this one we can put both of those two techniques together and create our final character so it's going to be four or five videos here and I'm going to explain this process first and then we'll explain this process and then we'll put them both together we'll texture them and then we'll have our final results over in Photoshop Okay, so let's get started. So we've got 3D coat loaded and we're going to go over to our voxel sculpting and we're going to select this character here, this standard character. Make sure you're not selecting this one. This has multiple joints. Make sure it is this one. So select that and that's going to load our character. Now again, this is in a perspective view. I currently haven't got my grid on, so I'm going to turn my grid. There's a little grid icon here, 3D grid. And I want to remove the perspective and go back to orthographic. So I can select this little square. And there we go. And just in case you forgot, when you hold Alt to move around, you can press Shift on the keyboard and then that will snap. Now you don't have to hold Alt because you can left click. But sometimes when you left click, it will assume that you're trying to select something. So I just get into the habit of holding Alt and left clicking and then holding Shift. So that's going to snap to the front view and we're going to duplicate this character. Before we do that, we need to change the texture. So yours might be set to default on the shaders. I'm going to select default and go over to polymer. And the first texture is going to be this black texture here. So black soft plastic. And then we can click OK. And I'll just name this one black. And then I'm going to duplicate this. So this little icon here, duplicate. And then I'm going to change that color to a blue. Click OK. And then I'll label this one blue. So we want to model on the black layer that's underneath. And then just have this blue layer floating just so we can see uh, a separation in textures there. So we're going to hide this blue texture right here. There's this little sphere icon next to the eye icon. If you select that. We can see it's slightly ghosted and we need to select the black layer that's underneath because that's the one that we're going to model on. So we're going to go over to the carve tool and we're going to change our brush. You could experiment with some of these brushes but I find the best results is with this square brush. Okay so with that selected we're going to create a symmetry all the way through so whatever we model on one side it's going to go to the other side so we can go to symmetry and symmetry, we can press S on the keyboard to bring that up. And we're going to go straight through the X axis. Just in case, you can select pick from bounding box. In this case, it is right through the center. And I'm going to make my brush just a bit smaller. So I'm using that tab key, or you can move the radius uh, just to make that a bit smaller. Now, the depth is currently set to 50. So if I hold left click and drag, oh, OK, let's press E on the keyboard. Uh, I currently had mine set to rectangular tool. Make sure it's set, uh, selected this uh, first brush here. So now when I sculpt, it's going to sculpt directly on top of the model. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in. That's by holding the right click button. Again, just in case it starts to select anything, you can get into the habit of holding Alt and zooming in. 
we can see it's very rough so i might just change this from 50 to maybe 20. ah uh, that's maybe not enough let's try 32 my favorite number there we go so now we're starting to sculpt on top so what i want you to do is literally just cover this entire character you can experiment with the uh, different brush sizes for now i'm just trying to sculpt over the entire thing i'm holding left click and dragging Try not to do too much. If you just keep going, it might look a little bit messy. Actually, that looked quite cool. So if you go too high, let's say we do 100, then it's just going to come out way too much. Again, that might be your desired effect. But be wary on that, uh, that depth. So I'm going to set mine back to 32. What I usually do is I set a lower number, sculpt over the entire thing. And then if I want to extrude some other areas, make them a little bit bigger, and I can just increase that number. So yeah, for now, I'm going to sculpt over the entire thing. You can do this totally randomly, or you might have a an image in mind. You might have, I don't know, some sort of TV show that you've seen with these cool mech characters, and you might want to mimic it, or you might like Gundam, and you want to try and mimic that, then yeah, go for it. But for now, I'm just being a little bit messy and just applying this sculpt. So the cool thing about this is we've already got that sculpt underneath, so we can use that as our base and then just keep sculpting. Now I'll, I'll often use these kind of techniques when I don't really know what I'm going to create. Because it's messy, you can come up with different results every time. So I could do this all day and come up with 20 different character designs, you know, or do it for a couple of hours come up with loads of different designs and then you can select which one you actually want to model with a lot more uh, attention to detail. Okay, we're getting there. Make sure you go underneath as well. At this stage, I would probably say that my brush is just a little bit too big and the depth is a little bit too high, but for now, I'll just keep it the same. So for the hands, I might just make that brush a little bit smaller. So the character is set to a T-pose. You can do it in Photoshop and move the arms down, or you could do it within the software, and I'll show you that. Okay, got a cool little neck piece here. You see that just <laughs> instantly cool neck piece design there with a couple of clicks. So I might be just slightly conscious of this design here. I might want some areas that are free, so I'm not going to model on all of it. So maybe it comes down like this. Uh, maybe I don't like this so much now. You can always hold control and scoop back into it. And then you can hold shift to smooth that selection out. Okay, so there is our design, and you can spend a lot longer on this. I've just done this very quickly. And again, you might have a very specific design in mind, so why not model that? Just increase this breastplate here. So if you want to um, start modifying this, you might have certain areas that are a little bit too blocky. Well, the whole thing's blocky, but you might want to just uh, straighten this up a little. You can hold shift on the keyboard and hold left click, and that's going to smooth this selection out. So you might want some areas that are a bit smoother and then areas that are a little bit rough. Again, you can change that depth if you just wanted a small change there, something like that. 
it could be some sort of strap that comes over again this is just the rough concept stage this isn't going to be uh your final model that you're going to have as a you know a game ready or something that's going to be animated in a film this is just that we can start creating some concepts and see what kind of shapes we can come up with And because we've got that symmetry on, whatever I do on this side is going to mimic to the other side. That's very handy. So maybe I'll just have a bit more of a, a shoulder plate here. And then I can hold shift, smooth it out, and then just keep going. What we can also use is the scrape tool and again I'll select that to the uh, the square I'm gonna make that a bit smaller and I've set the depth really low uh, let's just try one yeah I think one's okay you can set one or two let's try two yeah it's okay and that's just gonna make some nice stronger shapes it's gonna take that soft edge and make it a little bit harder so you can experiment with the scrape tool might want to do that for this breastplate here. Yeah, that's looking good. Do the same for the helmet. Uh, I'm, I'm actually I'm going to turn off the smoothing. So we've got smoothing set to 100. I'm going to set this down to maybe about 20. Uh, it's smoothing just a little bit too much. So I want it a slightly harder edge. Uh, oh, I could drop this down even more. Let's try four. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So if it's too smooth, you can always just change that smoothing number. There we go. Now, when you start texturing this, some of this detail is going to disappear. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to spend too long on this, especially if this is just going to be a quick concept, just to get some idea. I mean, if you were going to draw this, it's going to take quite a long time. So to use this technique, you're going to very quickly come up with that design. And then when you're happy with it, sure, you could draw it or you could start modeling in more detail. Okay, that's looking pretty good for now. Let's maybe just smooth out some of these legs. So why did we use that blue character? We use that so that we could see whether there's any gaps. We can see here the bottom of the feet is still blue. So I just selected two different colors. One was blue that's on top and then the blacks underneath, which is going to be brought forward when we start sculpting. And that blue is just going to make it easier to see if we've got any gaps. Now you might want gaps in some areas where you might have a different texture. So in this case, uh, the helmet design here might have a slightly different texture. And I, I can already see that I just don't like this character, um, or the, the helmet design at least. So I'd maybe need to start modeling into it a little bit more. Um, or just start fresh and just say, okay, I don't think the head works, but I like the body. So maybe I'll import another character with a fresh head uh, and then just continue modeling. Okay, so let's continue. Yep, that's looking good. So now we're going to go on to the next video, and I'm going to show you how we can start to apply some more smooth areas onto our model. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.